holy shit guys, it's been a couple weeks. Three weeks, something like that? I don't know. I'm sorry. Life got real. <laughs> really quickly. Um, and then it stayed like that for a while. I, um, I'm not really going to say I'm sorry that I haven't been here making videos. I'm just going to say I'm sorry if you've missed me. <laughs> um, I obviously, you know, I've got three kids here and stuff just got really busy really quickly. And um, between Samhain and parent-teacher conferences and dealing with my stepdaughter who is getting herself into a heap of trouble at school and um, sickness moving through the family and going to Vancouver Island to visit my grandmother who has dementia and just a heap of other things. Remembrance Day yesterday and having the whole family home plus daycare for my nephew and not having time to do my Wild Woman Wednesday video. It's just been busy and sometimes it's just how life works. And um, so yeah, I'm sorry if you've missed me. <laughs> um, today's video is going to be a little bit of a blog slash review slash um, here's my plan um, for next year. So um, some of you may know uh, from watching previous videos that I have been using for the last four years the Leone Dawson, um, you know, like in, uh, Incredible Life workbook. And um, I uh, really love her products. I especially love how bright and colorful and wonderful all of her artwork is. I have often done things like I've printed out the calendar in color and then cut out like the little image that was beside it and then pasted it into things or put them in journals or um, had them up as posters on my walls or things like that. I think her, her workbooks are just beautiful. And um, when I finish with her workbooks every year, what I usually do is I, um, when I get her new one, I transfer over any other goals that still resonate or things I still want to do, but I didn't get a chance to accomplish. I transfer it over. I save any pictures out of it that I really like, and then I burn the rest um, after I do my release ceremony for the previous year. Um, that being said, I had a lot of stuff that I really wanted to accomplish for this year and um, I really thought I was going to have a chance to do it because my baby was born the second to last day of 2014 and it was a planned cesarean because of all my um, uh, pregnancy scares and conditions and things like that and at the end she was breech and I had low amniotic fluid. There was no other way. This was a scary pregnancy all through it and then that on top of it. And I figured my son's going to be starting kindergarten part way through the year. Um, you know, I'm going to be home on that leave all day. Like this is a year I can really get some shit done, right? So I had all these great big goals in mind. And with the exception of a couple of them, I accomplished none of my big goals. And I've been kind of sitting back thinking about doing like my reflection, you know, I've got just over a month until winter solstice, which is when I typically do my really big um, uh, reflection for the year. And that's when I kind of start setting the goals for the next year. So between Samhain and winter solstice is when I really get sit down and do my goals for the next year. And um, I was thinking, oh man, it kind of sucks. I didn't really accomplish anything big this year. And then I started to look through at all the things I had written down on my 100 things to do list. And I realized that a lot of them I had written down were either really kind of far-fetched, vaguey, or, you know, I just wrote it down because it sounded cool kind of stuff, basically to fill a space. Or um, I wrote it down thinking that it was going to give me a feeling that once I had either accomplished it, it really hadn't given me a good feeling for a while. And a few weeks back, I was buying a book from Amazon, and um, this recommended book came up, and it was this one, The Desire Map by Danielle Laporte, who, by the way, lives like an hour and a half away from me, and um, I'm half considering like going to Vancouver and stalking her, <laughs> not seriously, jokingly, um, but uh, she. this is the first Danielle Laporte book I've ever 
red. And for some of you, that's going to sound like blasphemy. But you need to understand, I have this huge list of topics or books I want to read from the New Age community. And my budget, you know, like the list is like this big and my budget is like this big. So I get to stuff when I can and how I can. I buy a lot of books that are used or I, you know, do the little $25 sales like to get free shipping on Amazon and stuff like that. And I, you know, I have to shuffle stuff around to make it work. Um, sorry, I wanted to slam that back before it got too cold. Um, so, you know, I, uh, I hadn't read any Daniela Port stuff, but I had heard amazing things about her. And once I read this book, I really got why that list made me feel so empty when I looked at it. Because a lot of that stuff was written down thinking that I would feel a certain way once I had accomplished those things, rather than setting goals specifically to make me feel like that were in line with feelings I really wanted to have all the time, you know, across like more than one area of my life. And I've done most of the book. I have got down to writing down the core feelings. And I have not gotten any further than that yet because she literally said, put the book away for a few days at least, and then come back and see if those core desired feelings still make your heart sing when you come back to them. So I'm waiting to kind of get back to that. I'm going to give it another day or two and then come back to it and see what I can see. And um, I now have like this wonderful idea about what I'm going to do for setting my goals for 2016. And it will involve a mashup between Desire Mapping and Leone Dawson, colorful, new agey, uh, swear ridden awesomeness. And um, I also kind of had to step back and also really remind myself that sometimes it's not gonna be your year for big shit. Sometimes it's going to be your year for knocking down all those little to-dos that have been sitting on your list and you haven't been getting to them because they just seem like, oh, I can always do that later. And I can always do a million things later. And I, I got so many of those millions of things, little things done this year. And even though I look back and I go like, oh, well, I finally organized my office and my bookshelves. It was like, that doesn't sound like a big thing. But I'm telling you how much better I felt after doing it and getting it off my list, reorganizing my kitchen, um, going through my storage room and my garage and chucking a bunch of stuff, um, going through my kids' toys and chucking a bunch of those and getting our... Um, play like the stuff for play more in line with that Walder Steiner kind of idea for um, children's play and early education that made me feel like a million bucks after I got books read this year that I had been meaning to read for years and hadn't gotten to it because it felt more important to read books like this and while these are really important books to me, so is the entertainment value of reading as well. I do love to read novels. I do love fantasy. I do love an escape. Um, I'm not so much a movie or a TV person. So books a lot of the time provide that entertainment and that escape that a lot of other people seek from an electronic source. And so I really got a lot of books read this year that I you know, had been meaning to read for quite some time. And it was really nice to be able to do that, to get some of that stuff accomplished. And while I look back at the year and I go, well, I didn't do a whole lot spiritualize, I did actually. I got several rituals done. I got more than two done in a whole year, which I haven't done for the past few years. Um, I really got in line and in touch with what I really want spiritually, which I had been kind of, you know, dabbling in for years before. Um, I had really gotten clear on what my practice is to look like and how I do that. And again, I hadn't done that for the last few years. And so there was little things I had accomplished that when you add it up, it becomes a big hole. And um, I think that's really fantastic that I, even though I had this wonderful little clingy baby who didn't give me a whole lot of personal alone time and personal space because she does want to be with me, all the time. 
um, it didn't allow me to do some of those bigger things, but I sure did get a lot of those little things done that really make me feel good in the end. So, um, yeah, I didn't have this big, crazy 2015 like so many of you guys have had. Uh, but I did do a crazy amount of stuff in it, little, little things. And I did, like now I look through my house and it's so much easier to take care of because stuff has a place and there's not as much stuff in it. And, you know, my kids are happier for not having quite so many toys to clean up anymore and they're more organized and, um, you know, like there's just so much stuff that got established and it felt great to get it done. I saw friends that I hadn't seen in years. Hi, Brie. Um, and I've seen them more than once and about to see them again, it sounds like, too. And um, it, it's it's great to be able to, to do that. So if you've had if, if you've had one of those years where you didn't get a lot big done and you're kind of, you know, guilt tripping yourself, stop and look at all the little things that you did and be happy with that because you're not the only one who didn't accomplish a million things in 2015 and that's okay. Not every year has to be a big year and um, I know a lot of our favorite people that we like to watch in the New Age community, some of them have done some pretty big things with 2015 and you're like comparing yourself to them. Just stop, just stop, just stop, just stop. <laughs> um, not everyone can be just like them and get these crazy abundant and awesome years. Sometimes you're just going to have to accept that it wasn't your year to get so much stuff done. And then you try again for this year. But I really highly recommend this book because if you're finding that you're getting to the end of your year and you're feeling a little bit empty and you're feeling like you just don't have all the stuff accomplished that you wanted to accomplish, I would highly recommend this book because you might be going for goals that aren't actually really in line with your core desired feelings. And so you reach the end of it and you feel good for a few minutes because you, um, you know, got to take a little box off your list. But if it's not making you feel satisfied for a long time, then it might not be in line with you. So I would definitely recommend this book. Um, I looked at her planners for the year. They are so out of my budget, it's not even funny. So I won't be getting a Danielle Laporte um, planner as much as I would love to have one. Um, but, uh, you know, it's one of those things where sometimes you just have to do what you got to do. I could always ask for a Christmas present, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. That could be a really good Christmas present. Anyways, um, I will hopefully show you my mashup between the two things when I get it accomplished. I just kind of have to get that accomplished first. So, um... Tell me your experience with this, with her planners, with Leonie Dawson planners, any recommendations that you have. Just tell me how your 2015 went if you want and, you know, what you kind of want to look forward to for the next year and all that great stuff. And hopefully things have settled down enough that I can keep making videos on a regular basis. Ciao for now, guys. Bye-bye.